He's coming. Start your applause now as he makes his way around, ladies and gentlemen. He is the CEO of YGAP. Please, Elliot Costello. Uh, all right, let's try this segment without LB Tomasi jumping out of a KK. Um, ladies and gentlemen, welcome here tonight. We are, we are blessed to have you here more than anything else, but uh, we have seen why we're here, the achievements of YGAP over the past five years, and what an incredible video that summarised five years of love and dedication of a, an army of volunteers. We're here to celebrate the achievements of 102 YGAP volunteers who have jumped on a plane and travelled overseas to one of YGAP's field projects, injected their love, their time and their energy into this organisation, but importantly, learning a lot too from our project partners and understanding the essence of a community in every partnership we work at. We have learnt about the 424 volunteers over the past five years that have injected so much time and effort into this organisation. Their skill sets, their love and their commitment are reflected here tonight and right throughout the five years. We learned about the 30,812 young people's lives who have impacted through our youth education, youth leadership programs across Africa, Asia, and Australia too. To me, there's just one common thread between all of these achievements and more. It's a celebration of life. What this, represent, what this organization represents is a celebration of life. I see it in the eyes of every child we work with across Africa, Asia, and Australia, and I see it in the hearts of every YGAP volunteer. There's 30,812 stories to tell you, and obviously it's great to talk about statistics, but they're just statistics. It's the essence of the story that makes a difference. I want to share with you two quick stories that reflects and really symbolises this organisation at its best. First is a young girl I met a few, weeks ago, a few weeks ago called Thea. I was fortunate enough to travel to Cambodia with our, one of our major donors, Gordon Duncan from Linen House, and his son Scott, and uh, we got to learn all about our new project partner, Hagar International, and Hagar run an incredible model where they take the most disadvantaged kids in Cambodia, kids coming out of the most severe human rights abuses, and take them on a journey from recovery to independence. And that can take for as long as it takes, they'll make that commitment to that one individual. We went and had pizza with, uh, and Coke with uh, all, of, all of the young people at, in the Hagar program. And as we sat on the Mekong River, learning about these children, I was introduced to Thea. I was told that uh, Thea, unfortunately, at the age of eight, her father passed away. Being the sole breadwinner in the family, it meant Thea's mother was forced to take her to a refuge, an orphanage, just in Siem Rip, near the border of Cambodia and Thailand. Unfortunately, Thea was given everything but a safe refuge. Um, it, the refuge itself, the orphanage, was run by a Western pedophile, and at the age of eight, she lost her virginity to this pedophile, and lost her innocence. For two years straight, Thea incurred hideous, hideous in dangers on her body until the orphanage was closed down and Thea was taken to Hagar's care. As I sat with Thea for two and a half hours talking to her, it was all conversed through playing games. Thea doesn't speak any English and my Kamai is limited to about four words. But at one point in the night towards the end, she grabbed my hand and flipped it over. And with a texter, she drew a love heart, drew a love heart a young 10-year-old, and I couldn't help but think that I might have been one of the first Western males she had met after this ordeal. She'd only been in Hagar's care for a few weeks. She then flipped my hand onto the other side and painted my nails, and I made a commitment to Thea that I would wear one nail painted ever since. A few guys still ask me what the hell's on your finger, but uh, it looks good. And I got it shellacked the other day, it looks great. <laughs> and uh, it's the, the, the journey of Thea really came to life the next day when we got to go out to the CLC, the Catch-Up Learning Centre that Hagar runs for all of their, the children in their programs, and to sit with Thea in the classroom and see her alive and well. And I got to ask through the interpreter what uh, Thea's dreams and aspirations were. It's a common theme. I ask Elby, Tomasi and Thea. I, I ask almost everybody. But Thea stopped and paused and through the translator said that, uh, first of all, she wants to get a secondary education and then go on to university. Secondly, she wants to get married. I'm proud that this organisation, YGAP, will ensure that she gets that secondary education through our support with Hagar. But more importantly, the love that resides in her heart will ensure that she gets married too. The second person I want to quickly touch upon is David Mumbawe. Many of you in this room know David Mumbawe. He is our project partner in Rwanda. He runs an organisation called Senejo. 
Like many Rwandans, he was forced to flee his home country at the age of 13 due to the madness that erupted in April 1994. As a Tutsi, he was fortunate enough with his immediate family to escape and get out to the Congolese refugee camp. Many of David's other immediate family members weren't so fortunate. David pursued an education in Kenya where he migrated to after Congo and then went on to receive two PhDs in the US. We met David whilst travelling in between our two first projects in Malawi and Ghana. And just by the grace of being around us and by the injection of the ideas that we had coming off our first project in Malawi, David accepted the challenge of his aunt here return, to return back to Nenyo, where he grew up, and to invest in an education that his grandfather started in 1954. Nenyo Primary School at the time, in 2010, when this project was engineered and got off the ground, was ranked 38 out of 38 in the district in southern, in southern Rwanda. The past four years, with support of YGAP, David and his organisation, Senasia, have taken graduation rates from 0% to 98%. 0% of children graduating primary going into secondary school to 98% in four years. David commits himself... <laughs> David commits himself as a volunteer to Senasia, and he's been out to Australia a number of times, and we're a very proud friend of David's. And more than anything else, David's the exact person that we want to support and continue to back at this organisation, YGAP. In five years, we'll learn a lot. Make no mistake, we show you our highlights in a video, but we've, we've made a few errors. I think the one critical thing, more than anything else, that really drives home what this organisation stands to represent is our core belief that local people have the answers to local problems. An organisation like YGAP simply exists to facilitate part of their solution. We're so proud to back people like Dave and Mumbawe, who are willing to return back to their community and invest four years of love and dedication into improving graduation rates of children that are at risk of having their school closed down. So what does YGAP look like moving forward to 2020? It's an exciting vision, and tonight it pays tribute to recognise the past five years, the past five years that we're celebrating here tonight, but it's important to note that we have a destination, and tonight, I want to tell you that this organisation is only just beginning. We're five years old and we're looking to the future. We're setting some pretty clear objectives about what we can achieve by 2020 and we believe we can become a world leader at finding, inspiring and developing social entrepreneurs in developing communities to back them and their ideas to solve poverty in their own backyard. We're setting big, hairy, audacious goals like wanting to impact a million people's lives by 2020. Very ambitious, but the journey for us needs to be driven by a large objective. And tonight, we're here to really remind you that you're part of that journey too. You're part of that journey is our community, our broader network, and we're inviting you to come on this journey to recognise what we've achieved in five years, but say, I'm on board for the next seven years to help YGAP steam towards this objective by 2020. And tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we ask you to make that commitment, whether it's your skills, whether it's your ideas, whether it's your networks, whether it's your financial support. This is a destination we want you to come on a journey with us for, and we can achieve this. It would be remiss of me unless I concluded by simply thanking the people that make this all possible, and that is the 424 volunteers that wake up every day wanting to commit themselves to help change the world. 424 people that deserve a round of applause. I'm just honoured and humbled to be representing an organisation like this that prides itself on volunteering, but it's, it's a connected network of people that are just so passionate about something greater than themselves, about being engaged in an organisation that can create change like you've seen here tonight. I uh, just want to thank every one of those volunteers. The journey has been alive and you're my best friends in the world. I love each and every one of you. Thank you for being on this journey with us. Like everyone else here tonight, I encourage these volunteers, whether you've been involved for five years or five hours setting up today, strap yourself in for the next phase of our journey because we are going places and we need you on board again. Ladies and gentlemen, we celebrate this first phase. Enjoy your night. Ladies and gentlemen, Elliot Costello, the CEO of YGAP.